Um, congratulations, Russell. You know, seriously, how do you make everything look so bloody effortless? Um, I don't know, because it certainly doesn't feel that way <laughs> at the time. <laughs> You are outstanding in this, and I cool, honestly, I, I was, I've was i been telling everybody that for me, the, the humanity side of this movie has really gotten me, the stuff with the parents. I can't imagine that you didn't bring being a dad yourself into this role. Well, that was one of its main attractions, you know. Um, when I first read the script, it was, it was one of those things where that's how it was connecting me, you know, that the question that Jor-El faces, the, the, the situation that he's in, you know. I mean, you can take the the political situation in Krypton and the, the civil war and and the uh, rescinding of of the individual's right to choose and all of that sort of stuff. But really, the the, the biggest personal battle is that you have to take your naturally born infant son, and send him away, you know. But if you don't do it, and if you don't do it in this moment, then he dies as long as, as uh, along with the entire history of your planet as it exists. So, yeah, it was, it was an interesting thing. There's a lot of metaphorical references in the script to where we are, you know, with our treatment of the environment and stuff like that. I just, I, I found it quite a profound read, so I got involved. And I can't imagine that this didn't make you be the coolest dad on earth. I mean, seriously, Just recently two boys? we did a screening in Sydney and my boys were there and I was like, yeah. It was like, finally, I've made a movie that they care about. Oh, you're an action hero and a Lego piece. I'm a minifigure, brother. I'm a minifigure, man. Here it is. I'm a minifigure. They can right. collect their dad now. I mean, that's kind of crazy, but and it's my cool. minifigure, you can't even buy my minifigure, right? Oops. You have to purchase X amount from the Lego store, and then it comes, so it's like a super special collectible. Oh, you very know? special. Yeah, yeah, I might. <laughs> <laughs> Henry Cavill, uh, this is not your first encounter with the young man who you met on a set, you know, crazy. 12 years. It's crazy, it's crazy the way the world works, huh? Yeah. But what was it about him? Why did he embody the Man of Steel? Um, should I tell people that story? Because you know it, but your, your viewers might not. Go so I did a movie called Proof of Life. It was 2000. We were shooting in at a school, a very fancy public school, or private school, but, you know, they call them public schools in England. Uh, north of London called Stowe and the scene that I was doing there and the, the boy playing my son was a kid called Merlin Hanbury Tennyson it was a rugby game and I was there to tell my son that yet again I wouldn't be around for some event that was coming up in his life because I had work to do so yet again I had to disappoint him so in the course of, of shooting the scene the boys are playing a rugby union match in, in, in front of us and there was there was one particular kid on that field who was a dominant player you know, he just, uh, he got his team moving really well and and uh, so just because I'm a fan of that sport, a big fan of that sport, you know, I had my eye on him and I was watching and I was pretty impressed with him, you know. And then when we finished shooting that scene, that kid, that dominant player that took the, the moment when I was standing there by myself to come over and talk to him about acting. So we had this brief conversation and then we got swamped by other kids looking for autographs and photos and what have you, but um, so he sort of took off. A couple of days later, I was putting a, a package together for the young actor who'd played my, my son, and I thought, well, I'm going to do one for that other kid that talked to me as well, you know? And I, I wrote, I sent him, you know, some uh, rugby union jersey and some various things. Uh, and one of the things I sent him was a, a photograph from Gladiator. And I wrote on it, Dear Henry, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. And um, so, such a beautiful karmic circle cut to 12 years later in Naperville, Illinois, and I'm working out next to this kid every day, two or three times a day actually, because we do every day with multiple workouts. And you know, I'm watching him deal with the pressures of doing what he's doing very graciously. And uh, I see the, you know, the effort that he's putting in and I'm, you know, I'm quietly impressed with, with how he's getting about doing his business. And I had this thing in the back of my mind, do I know this guy from somewhere? And so I asked the trainer, a guy called Mark Twite, he's a very enigmatic character at the best of times, I asked him, do I know this guy, you know? And he said, mm-hmm, and that's all he said. Right, okay, so I asked my agent, how would I know this kid? And he said, oh, look, you know, he was a maitre d' at this restaurant in Santa Monica. I've never been to that restaurant. You know. 
One day we were just standing there, and it was a particularly difficult day. He'd been doing something on his side of the gym, and I'd been doing something on my side of the gym. We'd both had our asses kicked by the, our trainers, you know. And we were just having a little chat afterwards, you know, in pools of sweat, you know. <laughs> and um, I said to him, do I know you? And he goes, do you remember going to Stowe School? Oh, right, yeah. And he said, well, do you remember a kid who came up and talked to you? And I said, I do. I said, you asked me about acting, right? And he goes, that kid asked me about acting? He goes, yes. And I said, what did I say? And he said, he said, well, um, you get treated like but they pay you pretty well. And I said, that's exactly what I said. <laughs> Hello, Henry, how you doing? So, yeah, it was, it was just one of those beautiful little karmic moments that this job affords you sometimes. You know what, he, he's spectacular in this, and you are so, so good in it. And uh, just, you know, just please keep him coming. You're doing such a good job. I can hardly wait to see your Noah. Oh, my God. That's going to be interesting. People are pretty excited about that one. Yeah. Did you keep dry okay? Like, you probably have to be pretty wet for that one. <laughs> There's just water torture, man, I tell you. <laughs> it's one thing getting wet. But, and I've, I know this is non-biblical, but we had 36 days <laughs> where you're wet from, like, dawn until dark.